This is going to be a simple demonstration of how to do chalk cutting. Start with a beautiful frame of, cup of comb. It needs to be capped so that the cappings are as white as you can find in your hive and really pretty. I always cut with the frame upside down so that the top of the frame is down here because when I put the comb into the jar it needs to be oriented the way it is oriented in the, um, in the hive so that the cells are slanting downward which is the way it is in the hive. The cells are pointing that way. So uh, when I cut my chunk, I want to cut it, let it fall onto the spatula and be able to load it into the jar without having to do too much touching of the honey. Um, so I get a jar uh, ready and I put my spatula where it can catch the comb that I'm going to cut. I take my knife and I cut a straight line. Um, the, a shallow super is just about the right height fit into a wide mouth jar. Um, it, however, uh, doesn't give you any leeway. Like if you're doing shallow supers, then a shallow super, then you don't have a choice of picking where the comb is that you're going to cut. Now I want the comb to fall onto the spatula, so I'll put the spatula right under this comb, and it falls right onto the spatula. And then I'm ready to put it into the jar. And I take it over to the jar and I'm going to slide it into the jar like this, oriented just like it is in the hive. And now it's ready. Sometimes I put a second comb in there, but this year's honey is so thick that there's not room for a second comb. So it's ready now to be filled with honey um, to fill the rest of the jar. In case it didn't show up well the first time, I'm going to do one more example. I'm going to cut the honey, cutting it across the uh, frame about the width of the spatula, which is also about the width of the wide mouth jar. And I'll cut the vertical about the, the length of the, of the comb, of course, and it falls onto the, I didn't cut through very well, it falls onto the, um, hmm, I'm not going to do this one because it didn't do very well. It falls onto the spatula just in the right place, and I'm going to pour it into the jar in the way that it was oriented in the hive so that the cells are going down just like they do in the hive. It doesn't matter if you're just doing it for your own eating pleasure, but if it, when you get down to putting it in a honey contest, the Welsh honey judges will judge against you if, you're, um, if your cells are upside down. They actually say on their feedback, upside down in the jar. I saw it on um, uh, several jars at uh, uh, Young Harris Beekeeping Institute that I went to recently. So once again, cut the honey, it falls onto the spatula. Move the frame out of the way, get the jar, drop it into the jar, voila, there it is again, beautiful. Um, these bees did such a nice job this year. And of course then you have to um, have enough liquid honey to put around it and like I said that takes about half the super. So cutting again, these are ending up with a little bit of comb at the end that um, it's too small to go in a jar, so I'm just going to always use that to add to my um, honey that will be extracted, or in my case, crushed and strained. This is a whole lot messier than um, doing liquid honey uh, without the comb because it's just, it just is. I mean, I've got, my fingers are sticking all to the jar, and it's not easy to do this and do it in a neat way. Here you can see the 16 pint jars, wide mouth jars, that uh, represent the 16 jars that I did chunk honey from yesterday. This came from a shallow super that had 10 frames in it, but I fed one frame back to another hive. So I only used uh, 9 frames to get this, this honey. 
Um, the total amount of the weight of this is about 22 pounds. The remaining honey that is still being filtered will probably fill another couple of 8 ounce jars. I want you to see a jar of honey up close. Um, here you can see the jar of honey and you can see the comb through the jar and you can see how it um, how it, you can see the cells through the jar. It's quite lovely. And if you turn the jar to the side, you can see how the uh, comb slants slightly in a V toward the center, which means that the comb was put in the jar in the way that it's supposed to uh, to meet the needs of a honey show. Now, I'm not going to enter this honey in a honey show. Should I have entered this honey in the honey show, I would need to do a number of different things. People do a lot of tricks, including trying to figure out ways to get the comb to glue to the bottom of the jar. You can also see in this jar how the comb is floating now about a half an inch up from the bottom of the jar since the jar has been filled with liquid honey. People do things like heat the jar before they put the comb down in the jar so that the warm bottom of the jar melts the wax of the comb and, and secures it to the bottom. And it has to sit for a little while in the jar before you pour the liquid honey around it so that can uh, uh, achieve getting it down to the bottom of the jar. Another way that we can bring it down to the bottom of the jar is by using a medium super and cutting a longer strip. But that would mean that the comb touches the top of the jar, which is a no-no in a honey contest. If I were also doing this for a honey contest, I would have held the jars at all times with a white towel rather than my hand. It's a very sticky mess. You get, you get honey on the rim of the jar, which is not okay in a honey contest. So there are a lot of ways to do this a little bit differently should it be entered in a contest. Um, so that's how you do chunk honey if you want it for your own enjoyment and a few hints about how to enter it in a honey show. And thanks for watching.